Comcast. MI6 wants some alive for questioning. The target's in the metal coffer. Every agency in terror cell is looking for it. Big nasty super virus MacGuffin can destroy humanity, blah blah blah. And two random people, oh and one was once the bad guy, are the only ones who can save the world cliche. Considering these two dudes were not in her line of sight when she started running, how exactly did she know she was about to do this awesome jump, kick, and roll move? Get on the ground! Now! Glad the Fast and Furious franchise finally got around to introducing Heimdall. Also, why does he even need this? If this guy's attack probability was 30%, would he do anything differently in this scene? And excuse me, finger pressure? Don't worry, the editing will beat the ass for you. Never mind that Elba has a built-in computer screen that can calculate attack probability and finger pressure. It can't make him shoot straight. Unless that virus also turned Hattie into a superhuman, there is zero chance she has run this far away from the scene in the time it would have taken Brixton to get to the truck. Two minutes ago, the movie showed us a split screen of Rock and Statham getting up and going through their daily routine. Why not just do that with the fighting as well? It's none of this shit is all that thrilling on its own. They could have even staged the fights in such a way that the parallels between them could have been funny. Why don't you ever talk about Samoa? Did something happen? For the love of God, Skip! Cheat day? Cheat day. Movie you thought was the ninth Fast and Furious film is actually a stealth prequel to the gluttony victim in Seven. If someone leaves a back door open, it's a bit daft not to try and use it. Porn proverbs. What's daft is paying one of the screws to leave it open, but not paying them enough to keep their mouth shut. Porn psalms. Now listen, have you spoken with your sister? Jesus, this movie should have been titled Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw Bloodlines, with all the surprise family members these assholes suddenly have. It was called the Keith Moon because it, it involved lots of explosive percussion and permanent ear damage. Jesus, this movie should have been called the Keith Moon! It seems like a good time to bring up that Jason Statham and Vanessa Kirby have a 21 year age difference between them. And look it. So the idea that they were kids together is possibly the most ridiculous plot point in this entire series. And there was a scene in one of the movies where cars outran a submarine on ice. Lucas Rebecca Hobbs. Ah, sudden Deadpool. We well, never got I it. seem to remember getting a little something like this. Ryan Reynolds is a welcome addition to just about any film, but I have zero clue if I'm supposed to think he's just being funny or if he's the f creepiest movie stalker since Play Misty for me. Say hello to the CT-17 virus, affectionately codenamed the Snowflake. While the document lock shows Hobbs does say Snowflake, it actually says it's affectionately codenamed the Unicorn. Last night she was part of an MI6 team tasked with securing the virus. Some say she appeared in a movie that you could refer to as MI6, but confusing those would cause massive fallout between your friends. He knows I can see him, right? He knows nothing, Jon Snow. So if he knows what Game of Thrones is, then why did he say... Game of Thrones, Janet's house. I've never Lannister always pays his debt. This movie thinks someone not knowing what Game of Thrones is, then in a twist reveals that he does know, is somehow amusing. All right, who's on the case? Why in the f is Shaw on any CIA case? He's essentially a f bad guy. He spent all of Furious 7 trying to kill the main characters, and then they retcon Tokyo Drift so we could see that he f killed Han! Remember that? And sure, he helped save a baby in the last Fast and Furious movie, but he also killed like an entire hospital when he went to go visit his brother in Furious 7. A well, joke for you, love. What do uh, CIA operatives and baseball have in common? They are two things I don't give a toss about. <sighs> we at the CIA believe that when we hire someone to find somebody, we need to get their sibling to do it. No chance there's a conflict of interest there, no sirree. I mean, you think they'd be able to put aside any petty rivalries to save the world? No. no. Way. Good to know our planet's top agencies feel perfectly comfortable putting two guys who hate each other on the same team just for the comedy. Also, why only two guys if the virus is such a threat to the entire world? Two f***ing guys! Exactly why I hate working with you. It's your voice. It's your nasally, prepubescent Harry Potter voice. Movie wastes about a quarter of its runtime on Hobbs and Sean salting each other without wit for long stretches of time. Guys, why don't you two take a seat and we'll talk through this. What are these guys doing in this other room anyways? Why would they be recording Hobbs and Shaw's conversation? Why is this scene? Me and you, us, have been down this road. It's a total waste of time. Initial test screening reactions for this film somehow made it into the final cut. I don't undercover often, but if you want to make yourself less noticeable, is going for the exotic and sexy librarian look the best avenue to take? Got a lot of nasty people looking for you. Okay, so the only thing Hobbs had to go on to find Harriet was this picture and this map, showing places the cameras didn't cover. How was he able to know exactly where she was going to be and recognize her with a wig and sunglasses using just that. Everything involving this darkly lit, quickly edited action scene with Jason Statham is eye cancer. Well, good thing this grenade they kicked over 20 seconds ago didn't explode and is still spinning so that Shaw can realize it's a danger and disarm it at the last minute. When you saw her photo, you definitely gave the eyebrow. Please don't do the eye thing. 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 Damn it! Also, Hobbs thought this phone call was important enough to take while interviewing the most wanted person on the planet, a person he left guarded by an underling. That 
is my sister. How the f*** does Hobbs not know this? You mean he got the job from Locke, who gave him a dossier, flew all the way to London, got further briefings on the mission when he got there, and the connection didn't come up once? Both. She's too good looking to be your sister. I honestly can't figure out half the time if these are actual thoughts Hobbs is having about Shaw, or if he's just with him and vice versa. I also can't figure out half the time if this movie is for real or is just punching me in the d for two hours and 16 minutes. What is this place again? Oh yeah, it's a CIA black site. How in the f did these guys get up here to do this without being detected? Every time a character survives something like this for the rest of the movie, I'm just going to say Jumanji. Once again, why does Brixton need this? This seems to be more of an advertisement for The Rock's punching strength than it is useful information. Oh look, it took Brixton this exact amount of time to lift the car off himself so that Hobbs and the two Shaws could get away and the movie could have a chase scene. Nothing like random product placement for a car 99% of the viewing audience can't afford. You wanna tell me just what in the fresh turkey hell we're dealing with here? Fresh turkey hell. A years ago, I put a bullet through his brain. Great. So being chased by the Terminator. Honestly, if a Terminator showed up right now, would this film be any sillier? I'm going with no. Will the movie just once show a scene like this at full speed? Is slow-mo the only way this is exciting? Of course, it cuts like four times during this stunt, so my guess is it isn't even possible at full speed. And all your movie magic takes all the piss out of it. So why would the motorcycle even have that function? The real weapon is Brixton and not the bike. Was there a meeting where someone piped up, you know, there might be a time when Brixton has to get his bike under a large moving vehicle, and then someone else said, good point, does anyone here know how to build a transformer? Okay, rides over. I'm gonna lose this car. We also might be responsible for a lot of deaths that occurred over the last few minutes, including the people on that double-decker bus we just recklessly sent Brixton flying through. But no need to think about that now. We've got more things to punch our way through. Just got real. <laughs> Even if Etion can control the media like this, they can't create a script and upload doctored pictures and footage to all of the networks and have the reporters reciting it in the two or three minutes it took Hobbs and Shaw to walk to this street corner. No time for alpha male right now. Too bad summer movie audiences didn't say the same thing. Maybe they will when Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw 2, Two Hobbs, Two Shaw go to space in 2022. Russian newspaper. There's only one place in London that sells that. How the f*** do you know this is a Russian newspaper that can only be sold in one place just by looking at a grading photo on Hobbs's phone? And how do you know that's the only place that sells the newspaper? This is a disaster. If this guy's been buying this very specific newspaper from this newsstand every day, why did the CIA have a hard time finding it? The guy does this as a matter of routine, and they took a picture of him because he's a person of interest. Finding him would have been super easy. You kill her. Excuse me? No, and burn the body, of course. Of course. Of course. I guess this hilarious comedy scene was written by Jimmy Two Times, Jimmy Two Times. He's it for a job over in Italy. He might even say it was the Italian job. No, regular back channels aren't gonna work this time. We're gonna have to do our best to blend in. As brother and sister Shaw have pointed out in this movie, blending in is not a strong suit for Hobbs. And how does he know the regular back channels wouldn't work? Locke is clearly on board with him, and he's freaking CIA. So pretty sure they could figure something out. I'm Franz Gruber. Shaw is wearing glasses as a disguise, but this picture on his fake passport looks pretty much the same as the photo that's being shown all around the world. There is no disguise on this picture at all. Hands on your head, Pop Small. Can't believe you did that. Who's gonna slow us down? I know Shaw hates Hobbs, but that entire Mike Oxmall scene was for the comedy and definitely not the practicality. Even though he knows Hobbs is gonna get out of it anyway, the whole thing stupidly endangers the mission in a hundred ways. Why did she take her wig off? They're trying not to get caught, right? But quicker than I thought. Yep, because I have a secret weapon. People actually like me. This is the only explanation the movie gives for Hobbs being let go from airport security and to be allowed on the plane in time. By the way, now nobody's wearing disguises. Hobbs and Shaw have been on every news program saying they're terrorists for the last 24 hours. And if I know TV, every commercial break had a trailer for this movie playing on it. So they're doubly screwed if they don't want to get recognized. Anytime you ever say anything, it makes me want to take my boot and shove it so far up your ass, you're going to be spitting out shoelaces all week. We did this earlier. It's not even believable they hate each other this much anymore. In fact, if I'm reading into what Hobbs' daughter said about two people annoying each other being flirting, then these assholes are about to join the Mile High Club. I want to do an Irish jig on your ass ugly face at 30,000 feet. Okay, skip. And yes, that includes a surprise Kevin Hart cameo that happens during the scene that I definitely don't know about because I just skipped it. I want our property out of that girl's blood. Okay, why? You have a scientist who created the virus, but you'd rather extract it out of Hattie's blood because the plot? I know Dion wants Hobbs and Shaw on their side. So capturing Hattie might be important, but you really don't need the virus that's inside her if you can just make it. A group of foxy chicks who steal from Russian mobsters. Why can't we see that movie? Hell, this movie has a cyborg Idris Elba, and yet it's way more concerned with what kind of childish insult Hobbs and Shaw can throw at each other than the badassery of that premise. McJagger was a job that required one person to showboat to draw all the eyes while the others made the music. It also requires two guys to be riding bikes and two other guys running directly behind them and keeping up with them somehow, so that when I swung the paddle, all four of them would end up crumpled on the sidewalk. I got a shotgun. I got a shotgun. No, no, no. Don't start. These guys are arguing about riding shotgun on a jet. Next argument, apples versus oranges. To the death! We're entering the drop zone. You ready? 
Hey. This drop zone contains neither Wesley Snipes nor Gary Busey. Damn, you guys waited a long ass time to open those parachutes, didn't you? Jumanji! Yeah, why should we see a good fight? It's not like you built it up to be one or anything. For once, this movie is in sync with the audience. Access denied. I was gonna say Shaw might need to remove the half mask from the guy's face, but here he doesn't have it, even though in the previous shot, he did. Also, these assholes are on a time crunch, so I don't know why Shaw doesn't simply run over to Hobbs' side and run through his door. These doors go to the same place. Also, also, why didn't Hobbs' door open immediately after he got the access granted message? Why would these two doors be connected to each other for any reason? To have two people open one door, that makes sense for security reasons, but two people, two different doors? Wait, why didn't you use that infrared thing you used before you walked into the bull room with the bull henchman? So that's all she had restraining her arm? A band of Velcro? She had a cuff on her left hand and Velcro on her right, which is a mismatch in confinement and when you do Fifty Shades of Roleplay. Genocide, schmenocide. This was the working title of this movie. Look at the two of you! The fate of the world is in your hands and you can't even get along! I'm still amazed that Hobbs and Shaw are the only ones taking on this job. Like, as soon as Brixton went to the lab, Hobbs and Shaw should have had all sorts of backup on this mission. Remember, this movie is about a virus that can kill everybody on Earth in a week! Look at me! I'm Black Superman! Once again, the movie introduces story ideas that are better than this one. Not only that, but they've wasted the premise of the Elbinator in this movie. I'm gonna rip the arm off this chair. I'm gonna smash him right in the face, stab him right in the neck for looking that way. As much as I enjoy True Lies, it's absolutely insane to me how many versions of the chair scene have been created since its release. And this just makes me realize I'd rather be watching Charlie's Angels again over this And that is 100% a sin. You're not gonna shoot me. Because you need an activation chip to fire that gun. Feels like Super Spy Hattie would know this, and the gun itself would light up or something to tell the user that the activation wasn't set before pulling the trigger. But I guess this unauthorized gun usage happens so often that they want to keep its activation secret just in case this very situation comes up. Price is they make Hattie out to be the most badass character in this movie, but when it comes down to stopping Brixton, she has to be saved by the Professor? I love Eddie Marsan as much as the next person, but World's End wouldn't stand a chance against Princess Margaret, so having him be the one to save her just seems so wrong. Also, guns needing activation chips, finger matches, etc. to work in movies is so f***ing dumb. There are too many variables that would screw everything up. As annoying as Forgot to Take the Safety Off is, it still makes way more sense than this common plot device. Hobbs just busts through his chains because he's super strong. I'll allow that, but then Shaw jumps on the chair and does something, and the whatever it is sets him free. I hate this entire scene where Hobbs and Shaw need to save Hattie. When we see the car, we don't see her running. When we see her running, we don't see the car. The rooms aren't even numbered sequentially to help provide context for where they are and where she is. Mick Jagger! Never fires! What? That is exactly what happened. The Mick Jagger stopped working once Hattie couldn't fire the gun. And then the Eddie Marson kicked in and saved all of your asses. As ridiculous as what I just pointed out was, it's still what happened, so own it, movie. <laughs> That self-defense really is Black Superman. Because Superman is known for his amazing skills on a motorcycle. Run it out, run! Hold on! There is no way that Shaw knows there's a magic track that he can drive this vehicle onto. He either knows this lab's layout by heart, or he just got lucky. He didn't even look in that direction the entire time they were getting chased. Good thing this random metal grate track was at this exact level of the building where Shaw jumped his jeep through, because otherwise this movie would be over quickly. Wait, this could have been over? F***ing metal grate tracks. Fight the show. Pretty sure this whole sequence is going to be Jumanji times 100, so let's just go ahead and Jumanji the sins. Ah! This ain't gonna make it! You think of what I'm thinking, Shaw? You pretty much have to be, because you guys have nothing equipped to talk to each other. I guess we just take for granted that you have radios or something, but you don't. I got him. No, I got him. Unless you both have cybernetic enhancements, neither one of you has it. But by the gods of too old for this. Mel Gibson and Danny Glover versus Jet Li and Lethal Weapon 4, something tells me you'll beat him regardless. I'm tired, Tech. Me too, Hattie, but we've still got 50 minutes left somehow, so let's all down a Red Bull and some who news and get to the finish line. These guys have a little bit more than a day to get the virus out of Hattie, so they take about a 17-hour flight to goddamn Samoa, because that's Hobbs' home where his brother is conveniently a mechanic. But with all the contacts these two have, it's insane they didn't just go back to Shaw's place and get, I don't know, ludicrous to hell. From Moscow to Samoa, that is not an easy flight to charter. They went to Moscow to get that flight. They were in the Ukraine, which means they had to drive somewhere around nine hours to get there. There's no way this is their best option. Bring your problems here to this house. These assholes flew from Russia to Samoa and didn't even call Hobbs' brother before they got there, even if it was to check that he was home. They hopped an unregistered cargo plane. To where? Samoa. Yeah, finding that out must have been super easy. Show your work, movie. This is goddamn bull. 
at least one good thing came out of me jamming that thing into my hand. Unfortunately, it wasn't this movie. But yeah, I guess Hobbs being reunited with his brother I've never once been told about in previous movies or given two shits about counts as a good thing. All right, we're going to war with the family heirlooms. Man, I can't wait until the Ewoks show up in this movie. Wars what do? And the name of a terrible movie you were in, so there's that. CSI Samoa. What this montage tells me is that they don't have nearly enough time to pull all this off. But montages are good about making it seem like they do, condensing days or maybe even weeks of work down to mere hours, so nobody asks any questions. How can you question whether they succeed or not? They're working so hard, man! I mean, the only thing is, I can only block the signal repeaters on the satellite for six minutes. She literally just hacked in. How could she possibly know that? Also, Hattie was able to hack Etion's entire weapons inventory using just a stolen authenticator glove. Wasted. So much time, man. Movie accidentally films Vanessa Kirby commenting on this very scene and puts it in the final edit. Hattie made it so that these guns wouldn't work for six minutes, but why can't she do the same thing once the weapons go back online and get another six minutes? Granted, Brixton and his guys have no clue that they have to wait six minutes for the guns to go back online, but Hob sure as f does, so maybe less synchronized chanting and more punching. Remember the whole Brixton doesn't want to kill Hattie because they need the virus thing? That should still be a thing, but the bad guys sure aren't acting like it is. Hattie walks toward the helicopter because I guess the virus is acting up inside of her, even though I thought the virus was in capsules and wouldn't take effect for another 20 minutes or so. Anyway, Hattie is the most important person to keep track of, and for some reason Hobbs and Shaw just let her wander out in the open because movie. Even though this helicopter is ready to go and Brixton is getting Hattie on it immediately, Hobbs and Shaw will get in a tow truck and be able to catch up to them in time to do this bull because as we all know, tow trucks constantly beat helicopters in races. You get us close and I'll get her! I'll keep his snags down! You really me! Once again, I have to ask, how the f*** are they having conversations in moments like this? <laughs> God damn it. Every single action taken in this movie gets accomplished on the first try. Like, these dicks are practicing this in their spare time. Hit him with the moon side! Now! I mean, Jesus Christ. Feels like this movie has created a new sin in the tradition of this works, and they survived this, and that is called, He Heard This. This military-grade helicopter keeps missing with its missiles. Why is it so good at missing, but not that great at missling? <laughs> Jumanji! You don't die until I tell you to die! Oh well, makes about as much sense as everything else in this movie. Look, we just saw Hobbs hold the helicopter in place with a chain, so I don't think he should be losing this fight at any moment. If we work together, we can hurt him. You're right. Doesn't work as a team. What the f*** do you think you've been doing ever since you got to Samoa? Here comes the kryptonite! I don't think Hobbs understands what kryptonite is. Or he thinks that rocks are Brixton's weakness. But considering how much of the rock's ass he's been kicking in this movie, that's clearly not the case. Brixton never really lived up to our expectations. Yeah, you didn't need to say anything. They didn't even know you existed. But good job taking away the element of surprise. You don't remember me, do you, Hobbs? You will. It's gonna be a hell of a reunion. Sequel baiting. Hey, Locke. This is Sam. Sam? You must want to talk to my dad. Wow! You sound exactly like your dad. First off, this is the first thing she said on the phone call. Second off, she does not. Jesus, this movie has more end credit scenes than Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! The last time I put a bullet in If you want to get laid, you really don't have to pretend to be interested in the pyramid scam. We're in a war, then. I'll give you a war! We're running out of roads! Where we're going, we don't need roads. So say it now. Say it. Say it! Say it! First try. It's like dragging my balls across shattered glass. And it hurts. Formula has infinite depth in its efficacy and application, but it is staggeringly simple and completely consistent. Virus gets in the wrong hands, that's it. It's game over. Man, game over, man. It's game over. You thinking what I'm thinking, partner? Aim for the bushes. 